Hello one and all, it is I once again, and I was told by Mr. Jesse Midnight Crawler that I should do another beer review. Okay, I'm only happy to oblige. Went to the store and picked up three individual bottles because I'm learning my lesson real quick. Unless I'm in a really big mood to drink, don't buy six packs. <laughs> I've got like five six packs with just like maybe four or five beers in them. Some have three. Some are full six packs that I haven't cracked into. I got that family reunion from Shiner and they already have another family reunion out and the other one hasn't been touched yet. So uh, it's not one of those beers that gets stronger as it ages. So um, it's just sitting there and I need to do something with that beer, man. And uh, Maybe I should do a video where I just drink them all, right, one after the other, and talk about important shit till the end of the video where I just don't make any sense at all. That sounds good. Uh, hope the sound of the fan isn't getting on anybody's nerves. Uh, it's right here next to me, and uh, it's hot in this apartment, so I'm trying to keep from looking like a, a melting pile of goo, and... Um, Hopefully the sound of a fan isn't copywritten or I'll get another copyright strike. Fucking YouTube bullshit. So, let's kick this one off, shall we, with a little something. Literally. A little something. This is a Lagunitas Little Something Something Ale. I love the label. I've never had it. And I'm not the world's biggest fan when it comes to ale. Um, I've had some good ale. I've had a few good ones, but for the most part, not really, not really big on my list. Um, Arrogant Bastard Ale tastes like feet and shoes. I don't like it. Some people might think it's awesome. And to you, I apologize if I offend you, but I don't like it. Um, but I got this one because, first of all, Jess, Jesse has, bleh, I haven't even drunk anything yet, and I'm already tripping over my own tongue. Um, Jesse had mentioned this before, the Lagunitas line. Uh, there was like a dark ale, and, and so I, I forgot what the other names of them, but he had mentioned this one and said that he, uh, said he liked it. So I said, yeah, I'll give it a shot, give my opinion on it. I'm not that deep into drinking beer, obviously. I can't tell you the specifics of any one beer unless I do a little research on it and tell you, oh, yeah, it uses this kind of hops, and they brew it for this long, and it came from this city, and blah, fucking blah, blah. But it's basically just an opinion of whether I like it or not and what you can expect. Um, I think beer reviews might be become a little more common on this channel until I get the money together to do the other projects I want to do. There's this tour of uh, Broadway that I want to do. We have a Broadway street. Um, and there's, I was taking the bus down Broadway and I saw all these eateries. And I was like, ah, oh, man, I should do videos of that, right? And just show you the different kinds of culinary delights we have on Broadway. But that takes money, which I don't have. I do have money for beer, though. They're like, under two bucks a bottle. I got three, six bucks. Can't do that on Broadway. So anyways, this is the uh, little something, something ale. It is, holy smoke, 7.5% alcohol by volume. Maybe I should have saved this one for last. Well, let's get a good pour going here. Oh, I'm going to get a rowdy little buzz just off this bottle. I already know it. Anything over 5% kind of hits me right away. Okay. Um, that is a gorgeous color. It's deep, you know, but not too deep. It has a, more of an orange than a yellow tint to it, but it's... Oh, oh. Ooh, that smells good. Kind of, kind of citrusy. I wasn't expecting that. I, I honest to God, I wasn't expecting that. No one's ever told me anything about this, this ale. Let's hope it. Let's hope. I'm, I'm 
two for three right here. Let's, let's see how this baby tastes. Ooh. Don't mind my dog back there. She's a bitch. Um, oh, that grabs you by the tongue. That, that's like chewing on a, on a grapefruit peel. Takes it right by the tongue and mmm. Man, no mistake in that, man. There's some there's some heavy duty citrus peel in this bad boy. The smell is just wow, it just come here, boy. Oh yeah. That's a bold that that's a bold flavor right there. Even the follow through. It's not just the citrus that's that's, uh, that's making its its uh, presence known. There's there's a back bite to it that's just kinda like it's a thick, kind of a heavy Do you want something? Damn. <laughs> it's kind of a, a thick kind of uh, it, it lays on the tongue for a while. It doesn't fade out. Um, maybe, maybe some of you will chime in and say, "Well, that's normal for most ales," and if so, that's cool. But like I said, I'm not big on ales, so I don't drink them very much. This is pretty damn good, actually. Think of a think of the citrus uh, flavor you get off, like a, say, a Sam Adams. And then forget all about it, because it's nothing like that. <laughs> no, it, it's this is this is this really says something. But you know, it should, because these are not what I consider cheap. Okay, when you can get a six pack of anything for probably like five bucks, and if you want to step up your game a little bit, you get like a six pack of I don't know, Montejo or maybe Shiner for eight to nine bucks, and you really think you're stepping up. These run you, for the six that I saw there, um, you're looking at, I think this, it was like 12, maybe 13 bucks for the six. The Lagunitas Brewing Company, Petaluma, California, and Chicago, Illinois. Hey, all right. Let's go Chicago. Hometown, baby. Uh, life is uncertain. Don't sip. Well, hell, you can. You can live by that, can't you? I can. Life is uncertain. Mine is life is uncertain. Eat dessert first. But this this is really good. This is when you when you've done something just astounding. You want to reward yourself. Get yourself a six of that. Turn down the lights. Light some candles. <laughs> And spend an enjoyable evening with yourself. This is so good. It says don't sip, but I know if I chug this, man, I'm gonna it's gonna go right to the brain. For me anyway. I'm a lightweight. I told Jesse this too. I told him I can't hang like I used to. I used to just like dust. 12 packs, 20 packs, you know, suck them down, get a rowdy, rowdy buzz, cross the line into drunk, drink myself sober. That's your, when I was a young cat, man, I'm, a, I'm an old fart now, and it's, eh, I gotta take it easy, man. You got the enlarged liver and the spots coming in. You can't be doing that shit no more. Oh, yeah. That's nice. That was a, that was a very pleasant surprise. I'm not hot on the on the on that citrus flavor usually because you do taste that bitter, but it might be the ale too. I don't know the hops, perhaps. I don't know. All I know is that all in all, overall, this this is a very a stunning ale. Well done, Lagunitas. So there you have it. Yeah, little something ale. 
Look for the sexy little chick on the label. Look at the sounds. So we're all on collective disability. That's cool. Let's put some ice on it and keep ourselves elevated for a while. So what's on the tube? Honey, give me a beer from the fridge, will you, sweetie, please? I don't know what any of that means, but that's what's written on the label. Pretty neat. So, there you have it. I, I give it a thumbs up, big time. It's tasty. But I'm, I'm telling you, at 7.5%, which some of you probably come back like, Oh, man, I drink, you know, 12, 13%. You know, okay, that's good. Um, but for, for those of us who drink like a 4.7, usually on average, uh, 7.5 is a little high, just a little bit. And if you start slamming these one after the other, you're going to fill it. There's no, there's no getting around that one. Uh, that little beer that I had was, uh, yeah, I feel a little tingle right here. I like it. One is enough for me of these. But uh, it's not enough for this video. What do we have next, Johnny? Here's one I've been curious about ever since I saw its uh, the commercial for it. It's Guinness Blonde. Now, I'm a fan of Guinness. I like Guinness Stout. I've had Guinness Extra Stout, which is a very strong, very bold flavor. And that's how the commercial talking about, oh, that was something for our American friends. And it's like, wait, wait, what are you saying? Well, what exactly are you saying? I know what they're saying, and they're right. But I'm trying to imagine how Guinness would take a, uh, a blonde and what kind of flavor would it infuse in that. So as soon as I saw the commercial, I'm like, I'm trying that. I really should get a bottle opener that's not connected to my keys. It makes a lot of noise. Okay, first the sniff. Hmm. Okay, that's average. It's an average scent. Oh, excuse me, I rinsed out my one my one good glass, and I got water all in it. You don't want to water down your beer. A lot of places will serve beer in a, in a frosted mug. That was a big thing. I remember. When I was a kid, they used to sell this thing. I don't know if it was Norelco or who it was, but they used to sell a, uh, a little deal that you put your glass, your beer mug on it, and push down on it, and it sent this frozen air into it, and it would just, like, frost your mug, and you serve the beer in it. That was always a big thing. Served in a frosty mug. The thing is, is that when you put beer in a frosty mug, that frost will dissolve and turn into water. And now you've got water beer. Maybe not a lot, but enough. Um, people in the know, serve your glass, serve your beer in a glass that's room temperature. I mean, maybe if you want to be fancy, nobody gives a shit, go ahead, frost up your mug. But you, you really, it's better in a room temperature glass. That's just my opinion. Um, yeah, the, the frost, the frost gets in the beer and start adding water to it. And, you dilute flavor. It's not like a, oh, you're not going to get like an inch of water on the top of it or anything, but any water in the beer kind of sucks. That's why I was like just draining this glass into a napkin because I had I saw a little collection of water down there. I don't want that. So here we go. Guinness Blonde. Ooh, that's a dirty blonde. Hey baby, come around here often. That almost looks red. Oh, at first, at first look, it looked like a, a Killian's Red. But Guinness, guess what? Can you see me? Um, Guinness took a blonde and made made it their own. But I let it breathe a little in the bottle. It's got a, it's got a nice scent to it. Cross it. That's a, wow, that's a very mild flavor. Um, and yet it still has that, 
kind of that aftertaste, that little, that little hint of, of Guinness E goodness. Um, a little, a little bitter, just a little bit, but it's Guinness. I mean, if you drink Guinness and you, you've had it, you, the one thing you don't complain about is that that bitter flavor because it's that's Guinness. It's that's just how it is. So they took a blonde and they were able to maintain that that pleasantly bitter essence to it. Yeah, that's good. Well done, Guinness. Way to go, man. I mean, this... I don't know... I'd probably serve this at, like, maybe a semi-special event if Stella is not to your liking. I'd go with this one. American Lager. That's what they call that one. Guinness American Lager. So, a little celebration of of their their friendship and kinship and partnership with the great states that I live in, and they they throw us a little something. I wouldn't have sucked if found out like yeah, all the all the Irishmen got together and took a piss in the vat, and that's for you, America. That's all for you. Like man, I thought you liked this, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Uh, I have some hint of Irish in me, but I don't know from whom. I'm pretty sure it's from my dad. So, to one sixteenth of my fellow countrymen. <sighs> hmm. I'm definitely not hating it. If I ever run into a beer that just completely just turns me off, you will see me be disgusting. You will see me spit it back in the glass and just put it down. Be like, that's it. No. Mm -mm. If I would have taste tested arrogant bastard ale here, that's what you would have seen. I would have seen it. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh. <clears throat> that, yeah. There's not, uh, there's not a lot of beers that I've done that with. Um, Arrogant Bastard was one of them. Uh, some malt liquors. Yeah. King Cobra. Yeah, I mean, what do you expect? 99 cents a 40 ounce? But this was back when I was younger. This is another one of those when I was younger stories. I don't fuck with that malt liquor horseshit anymore. Um, well, I will drink a Mickey's if it's offered to me. Yeah. I, I will go there. Mickey's Big Mouth. Yeah, I'm always cool with a Mickey's. That's, that's cool. Um, it's weird though, because I've seen like some some malt liquors are more expensive than actual beer. This is weird to me. Um, the only other beer other than that was like Schlitz. Oh man, that was horrible. I was dying of thirst, and there was a Schlitz in the refrigerator. I popped it open, took two pulls off of it, just two swallows, and I was like, ah, "That's it, done. Don't want any more." This is going down nicely. So yeah, I'm sure this is going to be a big hit in like the bars. Um, I don't know why. Well, you probably get that one cat that comes to your house and he wants to be like Mr. Different, Mr. Fancy. Hey, we got a six of Guinness Blonde, man. You know, he won't bring PBR or anything like that. He's like, yeah, I thought I'd bring some, you know, class up the joint a little bit. Well, Guinness Blonde. Mm-hmm. So... And I see this being served in bars everywhere. And being enjoyed immensely. Um, yeah, I, I, I'd say this one, this one passes. If you like a bold tasting amber or blonde beer, this is definitely up your alley. Um, it doesn't, it, it doesn't, it's not weak on flavor, that's for sure. It's got a definite flavor to it, definite presence when you drink it um, and if you're into things like color and stuff like that 
you know, you saw the color. It was, it was solid. So I call it the Dirty Blonde. It's got to be the Dirty Blonde. We should call it that Guinness Dirty Blonde. I'm waiting for Guinness to come out with a black and tan. I bet you they'd do that up really nicely. A black and tan Guinness served just like that. You'd have to drink it out of the bottle. Couldn't pour it in the glass. Get all mixed up. Have that dark beer on top, light beer on the bottom. Nice little chaser. Yes, Guinness Bond. I'm rambling. I'm feeling the buzz of that other beer. I am. I really am. Just a little bit, but just enough. But it's not enough to, to stop me. So hit me up, bartender. What's next? And finally, the one I've been waiting for, the one that I've been curious about for about three years, maybe four. Ever since I first heard about it, I thought to myself, that sounds interesting and wrong at the same time. I've heard people give the reviews on it. I've heard people say that it was good. I've heard people say it wasn't that great. But I'm always up for interesting little beers. And this one is definitely interesting. It is Wells Banana Bread Beer. Now, when you think of that, you're thinking essence of bananas. You're thinking of that sweet taste of banana bread. I know I am. And, I mean, any kind of bread beer sounds weird to me when I first think about it. Like, if they try to pass off a garlic bread beer, I don't think I'd be in line for that. But I've been tasting some rather sweet beers lately, and banana bread just kind of... It was time for it to be tasted. Um, like I said, it's been a few years since I first heard about it. Way back since... Uh, what was his name? Oakland STF? Or STF something? He had said that he liked it. <coughs> I remember that. And I said, oh, yeah, I'll have to give it a try. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Never did until today. This is a huge bottle. One pint. This is a pint bottle, man. And it's 5.2%, which wouldn't be so bad. <coughs> wow, excuse me. Except that I just had, what? Do they have the alcohol in this? Yeah, there's 5% alcohol from this and 7.5% from the Lagunitas. It's a little sump mail. So, add to that 5.2 more percent. Here we go. The hell? Yeah, there's a little sweetness to it there, but that is my glass. I lost my glass. You can tell when the alcohol is taking effect when you don't know where the hell your glass went. I found it. It's here. I haven't had anything. That's what it is. I haven't eaten anything. Oh, yeah, I ate. Shit. Am I that much of a lightweight? This stuff? I'm, I'm not drunk. Definitely not drunk, but I'm, I'm feeling a little, little buzz. <clears throat> the lack of meat is really, really ushered in the buzz. It's a nice little buzz. It's not rowdy at all. It's very pleasant. Yeah, I could take a nap like an old man. Anyways, banana bread beer. It's a pint, so I'm gonna like fill this glass and then fill it again, I think. These colors are basically uniform. They're, they've all been about the same color. If I can get a head going on there. There you go, look at that. Ooh wee. A little bit of a head, not much. A little head is better than none at all.
It, it smells like a, like something you'd uh, like a like a sunblock. <laughs> it smells like a banana scented, so like banana boat suntan oil. Couldn't even say the word oil. Way to go, man. Here we go. That's pretty good. Although it tastes like um, there's like the slightest hint of banana in there. Honestly, the flavor that really stands out is like oatmeal cookies, fresh baked, soft oatmeal cookies. That's what I taste. Slightly, it's more beer than anything. Don't go into this thinking like, oh man, I don't want to drink this. It's all sugary and tastes like a milkshake. No. No. Or if you really like opened a banana, like a really brown banana or a really ripe banana, and that essence, that's, that smell that you get, that's what I'm tasting here. Um, not bad. Would I, uh, would I buy it again? Probably. With the right company. Yeah, it's not bad at all. Uh, just don't go into it thinking, oh, it's going to taste like banana bread or banana muffins. It, it's, it's got that essence to it, but it's, it's beer before anything. So, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't fail on that point. It's definitely not a, it's not a beer for, how do I say this without offending anybody? You know how you have those people who can't drink a beer unless it tastes like Cherry 7-Up or... It's like, oh, that tastes too much like beer. It's a beer. What did you want it to taste like? Um, but they, they want, like, this candy flavor and stuff. Like, I've, I've taste tested, like, the Peach Orchard, and I've tasted the, uh, the Summer Shandy, which has a lemonade blend. But it's always been beer first and then the flavor or whatever that's that's infused into it that comes across and it's like ah, it's pleasant you know but it's still beer at its core it's beer but there's some people who won't drink things that taste beerish they want uh, they want like a spritzer they want it to taste like candy and it's like well the only people who should be drinking stuff that tastes like, like straight up sweet, syrupy stuff is, is like underage drinkers. I'm not condoning it, but we've all been there, right? We've all had like Boone's Farm, and you know that stuff, that don't taste like no wine that any sophisticated adult would drink it tastes like soda it tastes like a a refreshing drink after a hot day it's it's uh, it's sweet it's fizzy and and it sure does get those panties off doesn't it not for me though when I was a teenager I was a virgin all the way until I was never mind it's none of your damn business how long I was a virgin assholes but uh yeah, it's, it's good. It's pretty good. Don't give it to, like, you know, your friend and have the one who doesn't drink beer. Say, oh, no, you'll like this. It tastes like bananas and, and cake. No, it doesn't. I hope somebody's watching this video and having some type of alcoholic beverage with me. I hate to think I'm drinking this by myself. This is this is too good to be drinking alone. There. Uh, there's, there wasn't much left after that pint. This glass holds quite a bit. Shit. I said earlier that I'm not really that deep into beer drinking. Like I don't know the difference between the glasses. I know there's a Pilsner glass and there's a Schooner glass. And 
there's all these different shapes and they have like I saw a set of glasses that was like six six glasses six different styles and I thought to myself well is that like does it aerate the beer more does it is it do you serve certain beers with certain types of glasses um, does it have to do with the size the amount does it have to do with the flavor of the beer um, I don't know any of that stuff and basically it's like if it if as long as my glass doesn't have a hole in the bottom of it I'll drink beer out of it you know what I mean a pint glass love pint glasses because they hold more beer I like drinking out of a glass quite frankly I don't I wouldn't chug out of a bottle I used to but I drink like I'm in a commercial hmm. I don't always drink beer but when I do it tastes like banana. <laughs> um, yeah, that's that's an that's a pretty good beer. Um, don't know how often I would drink this throughout the year. Like maybe if I had friends over, I'd be like, hey, have you ever tried banana bread beer? No, okay, I'll go grab a few bottles. But going out of my way just for myself, would this be my beer of choice, like on a football night or something? No. No. We all know what that is. My beer of choice is Shiner. I like Shiner. I like their their uh, their array of beers. Is this video dragging? Is it going too long for anybody? Because I could, I could stop, I guess. Or you could stop. Why do, why do I have to stop? You could just click done that's it done and if anybody's out there saying I wonder if he's buzzing I'm buzzing there's no oh I just say bananas Magnificent. So, what we had today was a Guinness Blonde, which was a nod from our our friends who who've been feeding us the really dark beers, which I love, and said, "You know what, America, you need a blonde beer just for you." Then we had the banana bread beer, which was uh, surprisingly good, very good. It's a product of England. Oh, look at that. I didn't know it was from England. Long ago, ale was known as liquid bread. Oh, yeah, I've called it that many times. Beer, it's liquid bread, it's good for you. We've used our long history of creating the finest malt blends and added fair trade bananas to awaken the senses with a seriously fruity, rich, and surprisingly versatile banana bread beer. I get it now. They added a banana essence to this because it's basically liquid bread. It really is. It's got the malts. It's got the yeast. It's got all that stuff in it like bread does. So yeah, there's that an essence of banana to it. And it was really good. And then we got this little saucy wench. Lagunita's little something. If anybody out there's got tits like that, God bless you. Um, what can I say about this? Very citrusy. If you like a citrus-based beer, if you like that, that, uh, uh, like grapefruit zest, like the Samuel Adams has, this will not disappoint. This really has a very strong citrus essence to it. And flavor. And like I said, it just completely takes the tongue over and, and lets you know what's up. And I recommend it. 
I highly recommend it, but just know that it's not one of your six or seven dollar beers. This that one's gonna that one's gonna set you back about maybe ten to thirteen, depending where you buy it from. I got it from a local store, H E B. I got it from H E B, and uh, I think they're running about eleven or twelve a six pack. So. Just, just so you know. But if you can get it in a single bottle, just try it out. Go for it. I don't think you'll be sorry. So that's it. And to Mr. Jesse Midnight Crawler. Hope you enjoyed that. And to everyone else, I hope you enjoyed watching me get slightly inebriated on camera. Uh, I really drank these too close together. Uh, I have some place to be, and now I don't even know if I'm going to be able to go. <laughs> I think they throw you off the bus for being intoxicated. So, we'll see. But until next time, take care of yourselves, be good to one another, and I will see you all again really, really soon.